Morning, everybody. Turn that light off. I don't know that. Who's here? I'm sick. I'm sick as fuck. Ken, that's what's up. Libertarian. What's going on? Hot steaming cup of Theraflu. Because <clears throat> I'm sick. I feel like shit. But, while those stones get wet, I am going to do some sharpening because still got customers that want their stuff back. Guarantee it. I caught whatever, caught whatever my daughter has. I've been throwing up all morning. It's, uh, oh, not sake. I don't always sake. If I throw this up, I got that Theraflu for free. Somebody gave it to me. I throw up sake. That shit's expensive. What the hell is that? A white spot on my face. Maybe I'll go get that checked out. I was hoping that the wine and whiskey I drank last night would, I did, we, there's this thing that we call a whiskey burnout, which is you drink like a bunch of alcohol real quick and you lay down and you cover yourself up. And so I, I slept in a, in a hoodie and you just basically you sweat it out. Um, I didn't have any vodka. A lot of times you do it with vodka. So you just pour yourself a big glass of vodka and you drink real quick and you go to bed and you wrap yourself up in a blanket and you just go to sleep and you sweat out and you wake up the next morning a lot of times you feel better not this time I woke up this morning and I was sick I'm running a fever um my fever I got my fever back down but what I was going to talk about is I had I try I try not to like I, I'm not going to say I don't read you guys' comments but I try not to get What's the word I'm looking for? I try not to get too wrapped around the axle when it comes to a, to some of the comments because the fact is, I know there are some people whose opinions just will not change. But I had one guy that was talking to me. Basically, he's like, I can't believe you paid 240 dollars referring to this knife. And remember what knife I had in the video. It was this knife. I can't believe $240 for a Chinese knife. And the point that I was going to get back to is that is a closed-minded way of thinking because I guarantee that that guy would have no problem buying a, a $200 knife from uh, like a fox knife or something like that from Italy or what's the lion lion steel that's that's a lot of their knives are made in China now I think if I remember correctly but you know saying that oh, I wouldn't pay $240 for a Chinese knife you're basically admitting that you are biased you're basically calling yourself out now i'm not going to say necessarily say racist but you're basically keeping yourself out of a area where you know lion steel is china and that's what i thought lion steel does make some other stuff in china but they're they're i think they're in a tiny country. at any rate so you've You've got all these people that will say things like, oh, I would never buy a Chinese knife, but they'll go and they'll buy. It's Italy, but I do believe they have some of their knives made in China. I'm telling you, I thought that I had read that they were getting some of their production knives made in China. Anyway, to say, yeah, it makes some in China. Exactly. To say I wouldn't buy, I wouldn't buy, pay $240 for a Chinese knife. Uh, I got news for you. It's going to be to the point where if you want a knife that's in the $200 price range, you're gonna buy a knife that's made from China. And so it just kind of, you know, where else in the world, Canadian knife, uh, Japanese knives, and things like that. But the second you say a knife made in China, and some people say, oh, it's politics because China's this, China's that. Well, people, Russia was our enemy in the Cold War for a very long time. People are buying Shurigorovs and, and and custom knife factory knives where do you what draws that line that you won't buy a Chinese knife 
because I know how expensive stuff is to get done and how expensive things are to be made and the the mom and pop the onesie twosie you know guys like Chris and Elliot the option for them to have things made in America that are at the price point where people want to pay it's disappearing if it's not already gone that's why when you look at their to get that stuff made in the USA to make their next run of knives that's why they're more expensive because they're doing it US US made so keeping your money in the US that's great okay then you pick a guy you pick a design that was designed by a US knife maker booze blades the mini arrow awesome awesome knife made by we any of the mass forge knives that Chris and Elliot are, are having made with we that are coming out through mass drop great there you go you pick somebody you want to support because those designers get money for each one of those sales so you're supporting a US knife maker it's just going about it a different way I'm not gonna lie to you this react beats almost any knife that I've ever had almost hands down American made it's like that this is this was the beginning this was the first one I realized it and so companies like we react Kaiser hey Nico I appreciate it if you want to mail it to me because I don't know if I'm gonna be there Friday uh, this is the horizon this is the horizon D in carbon fiber in m390 this is a four hundred and ten dollar knife no issues with this knife no grind issues no centering issues everything was perfect everything about this knife except I cracked a bearing one time I cracked a bearing one time you know what else you get for four hundred and ten dollars this which was misground and has an issue with the bushing and the chamfers are off and the steel won't hold an edge anywhere near as good as this and it came plain extremely plain and the only reason it's green now is because I did it I had more issues with this made in Idaho Sabenza than I did with this at the same fucking price the only thing that I didn't like was I didn't like the sharpening notch so I opened up a little bit on my own and that's just a personal preference so back here we go again with people are like whoa you know just not American knives and this thing did you buy spider codes buy spider cow they're not made in America most of them aren't anyway let's see where was this one made of customers knife here that I'm gonna try and sharpen this D2 was made in uh, this D2 spider co does not have or bench made I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm, I am not tired I got I said spider co and it's bench made <laughs> I did that here with a file um, but it's that it's that close-minded attitude that is going to kill the US knife market um, US knife makers are marketing to a group of people that really don't exist anymore they're marketing to the tactical and the the guys that are um, the old the old white guys as Chris likes to say the old aging white guy it's not a good demographic to, to lock your market down and double down on because I got news for you that demographic is dying literally they're dying the old white guys that used to be the guys that you would be able to sell shit to they're dying so it just irritates me when I get somebody that goes on And, and people just immediately associate China with with poor quality this one of the best knives I've ever owned two hundred forty dollars and when somebody asked me what's the smoothest knives you've ever held or used outside of a sure Gorov or a Ferrum Forge and I have to say okay it would have to be a Wii or a react I've had a couple reacts come in I had a react come in for a guy it was it wasn't a k2 it was the recurve Tonto I can't remember what that one is hands down one of these smoothest knives did that get real dark all of a sudden on you guys <laughs> but I just wanted to, to talk about that for just a little bit because it just irritates the piss out of me that people can be so close-minded I think it was I think it was the k4 people can be that close-minded about something and just think that 
comments. I'm not reading comments, Vinny, so I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sick and I'm not reading comments. I just, this was easier than trying to film a video and, and edit it just like last night. And I have some sharpening to do. I got this in, I refinished it, sharpened it before I refinished it, and then realized I had dinked the blade into something. So basically I gotta resharpen this knife again. Take the little, Nick, hang on a second guys, I gotta try and get this canopy opened up here so I get some better wind that's stuffy up under here. Not hot, just stuffy. I'm coming back. I am here. Woke up this morning, running a fever, throwing up, got the shits, but I still have stuff to do. No, that's, I mean, that's, I have two high-end Chinese knives. Um, I had that rake uh, that I got rid of. Uh, I gave it to my daughter's ice skating coach, I actually got it. She had me finish it for you. I apologize for the blue tint and everything, but the sun is just, right up here coming down on my canopy yeah i think i got the flu i'm running a fever puking headache um i have a straight razor i gotta do i got four knives to do i have a package coming i'm just i'm gonna sharpen knives yeah it's bad i feel like crap but i mean this is something i can do it's not cold out here i'm under the canopy i got thera flu i have my fever down to where it's not horrible. It was like 102 this morning when I got up. But damn, I hate redoing work. I hate doing things twice. Don't own a rake or react. I'm figuring I'll get one from each. The one of the best knives I've ever owned. This one has got. I did something to it. Um, I think I may have bent the pivot. It's got a bit of weirdness to it. Uh, I was messing around with it. I think I bent the pivot a little bit. It's not centered like it used to be, but just slightly. There's not very many people that no would notice it, except for me. So, um, Christ. I, I hate sharpening scepters in the first place because of the way the blade shape is and you get down into the choil pretty easy, but to have to do it twice. Just a small, I don't know what I got it into up there at the shop when I took it apart. So, don't get me wrong, I love American knives. I love most of the knives that are made in America. I love Fair and Forge. I love my Fair and Forge knives. But I do understand that the price that it costs to get an American made knife makes it prohibitively expensive. I mean, look at the cost increase that the that Firm Forge had to had to incur on their next run. It is not a viable option for a small company of one or two people. If you're a sole proprietor, it ain't happening. It's just not happening. Like me, I mean, even with you know, I just got some steel cut out and shit like that. I, I don't know if I had not had assistance from Jeremy Morris, I probably would not have been able to afford to even do it. D2 blades sharpening on diamond sharpeners. I don't use diamond sharpeners, so I don't know what D2 does on diamond sharpeners to tell you, to be honest with you, not at all trying to blow off that uh, comment. I just, I don't use diamond sharpeners. I like D2. D2 takes a really good edge. My uh, Ontario Rat 1 is in D2. And it it's doing great. So as far as D2, yeah, it's great. But as far as how's it do on diamond sharpeners, could not tell you.
so. Is it? I got some people talking here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend D2 on Diamond. Always wanted a DOC. The I have a DOC that I have thought a couple times of getting rid of, but I like it, uh, Vinny. Or I would. The only thing I'll tell you is the DOC's detents are always weak. Um, maybe I'll send you mine. Let's carry it for a little bit before you up and go and buy one. It's not in. It's almost like it's too far in. It's not out far enough is the problem. And I think the detent hole is too small, but then if I open the detent hole, I'm going to wind up with some play. Um, and I don't want that either, so... This time of day sucks. I get that weird blue tint to everything under here. Yeah, you have the 801, I had the 108, and I sold it. That's the one I did the pink ceramic and black, pink and black ceramic on, Nico. Which is sort of my daughter's ice skating coach. Since I didn't pay for the knife, I basically only charged her for the finishing. Oh, did I ever... Did I show you guys? I know I did it in the... On Instagram, but I ever show you guys what I did to this? So I did a patinaed copper look to this. It's not going to show up well under this blue. But, um, so I did high voltage green and tumbled it. And I got like a... Almost like a brashish, bra brassy... Like a copper, like a patinaed copper effect. Um, I know that I put it on Instagram, but I didn't know if I should... I, I might do... A video just about that it's one of the best yeah but I mean it is one of the best but I'm gonna tell you right now you get a plain Jane basic bitch knife for same price I got this I got this react for the same price and it was carbon fiber and it had anodized hardware this was plain but it had an blue anodized hardware and I wanted it to make look, look like a race car so I did all that anodizing but what I'm saying is this is a much more refined and finished knife at the same price out of a Chinese company. Carbon fiber, blue anodized hardware. This backspacer was blue. The pocket clip was blue. I'm not selling my Sabenza. <laughs> Buy a basic bitch Sabenza and you pay me to refinish it, though. not black washed that finish is called just a touch it's definitely different than black wash black wash is a completely different process just don't want, don't want it to be confusing between I'm sorry could be in a bad mood too because I'm sick it's okay I have a trash can on here I can throw up in too I haven't seen a 601 for a while. I don't know. The Wii 601s uh, have not been. <laughs> it's pretty easy. James, so James just, James G just asked, how easy is it to screw up the temper when um, sharpening? It can be really easy if you uh, are not paying attention to the speed of the belt and how much how long you're making contact, things like that. So, that's, um, you know, I just, I get frustrated when people are so closed-minded about some stuff. What was that, say what? Um, Say if you have a 
FFGP on me the entire Wait, 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 wait. So if you have a um I wouldn't do that. Kaiser Rattler and has S35 titanium ceramic balls D10. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, that's and so you paid $113 if you were to then say you wanted it to be special. You could send it me for like 75 bucks and do the refinish. And that's where this is at with that knife. People are like, oh, um, why, why am I, why me, ask me why I am happy about the Chinese marketplace. It's because it has forced U.S. makers to reevaluate what they're doing because the the thought process was that you're always going to have that market. I'll only buy American knives. American knives doesn't matter how much they cost. Well, you're going to have those onesies, twosies. On this channel, I've got almost, I've got thirty, I got twenty four hundred subscribers, and I've only had a couple of people comment that they would never buy a Chinese made knife. The dynamic and things in the in the knife community have changed, and knife makers just are not picking it up. They're not picking up the signs and symptoms, and what's going to happen is the guys that are the early adopters are going to be the ones that succeed. The ones that don't are going to be the ones that fall apart. So just to put that into perspective of big business, Walmart, right? Walmart adopted the online sales model real quick when they saw what Amazon was doing. And they were like, oh, this is a threat. And they started doing the same thing that Amazon does. And they put themselves in, they put themselves up in that, that period, that, that place in the marketplace where you get anything you wanted from them anytime. What can I do? This, this is, it's sad to say, but this country has gotten to the point where it's, what can I accomplish without putting on pants? It's 100% true. How much can I accomplish today without putting on pants? And so Walmart saw that. Target didn't adopt it as quickly, and that's why Target is behind the power curve. Costco, Walmart, they saw what was happening. But then you had companies like, you had companies like uh, Toys R Us. Toys R Us didn't. They're like, fuck, fuck Walmart, fuck Amazon. Who's going to want to get, we're Toys R Us. We got the name. Well, it reaches a point where they didn't realize was that people do not want to have to go to the store. And they tried too late. And guess what? Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy. Walmart adopted that and didn't have a problem. Kmart and Sears did not. They, they didn't adopt, adopt that, that as quickly and people just kind of, well, fuck, you know, I can get anything I want from Walmart. Whether they did it later or not, it's beside the point. They were too late. They got on board the train too late and had to go sit in a cattle car with everybody else that now has a sales website. All those companies that are failing, Kmart, Sears, that's one company together. But if you do not, what's with the Gonzo Cleaver folders and carbon fiber, they, they were okay. Um, so what happens is these people think, oh, well, I've got the name, Sabenza's and, and you know Chris Reeves Knives and Todd Begg and all those guys. And what they didn't adopt was the new changes in the market, which is American, the new American consumer they give a fuck where it was made. They don't care where it was made. They just want to get it. And they don't want to have to wait for it. They don't want to wait, you know, these the days of being able to go on the books and sit there for three years and finally get your knife. That's not the new, that's not the market. The market is not for the people. The market now is for the guys that, that want something and they want it soon. I mean, let's think about it. The people complained about, you know, you go on the books to get a knife made, you might wait for a year before he even contacts you to find out what you want, right? Like, hey, I'm finally around to you. What, what do you want? And then it's gonna take him months to get it made. Those days of people waiting that long, look at the mass drop comment section. When the Falcons came out, people were like, oh, I can't believe I could have waited like three months. Fuck, man, three months, that's nothing. They're doing a whole brand new run of knives. It's, 
I hate HEA designs. Their shit looks, it looks like shit. They might be good quality knives, but they look horrible. Anyway, back to what I was saying. It, it is now a, I want it and I want it now. And if I have to wait more than a couple weeks to a month before I hear something, I don't want it. So yeah, Randall Knife, it's taken years. That biz, those guys are going to realize that their customer base is dead. It's gonna to be too late. It will be too late for them to truly, I'm out of sync, I can tell it already. Um, I got lag, don't I, it's, it's crappy quality. Um, they're gonna to realize too late that the people that they marketed to have died. And they're like, oh crap, our customer best died because they're getting old and they're not bringing themselves into the next group of of people that are going to be their their customer base. I mean, if if you marketed something specifically only to World War II veterans, well, yeah, in the 50s, that was probably perfect. That's your demographic right there. But I got news for you. If you're still marketing to that same demographic 60 years later, 70 years later, your business is going to die. It's, it's like, it's just like if, uh, just like in, in life with, with life period on this planet, if you do not adapt to your environment, you're going to die. And even with, even with the early adopters, like Dwayne said, I've worked for Target. Um, even with the early adopters of that, it's, it's too, it's, they're still fighting because Amazon was first. Amazon was first. Walmart has it, Costco has it. That's why Walmart, Costco, Target, that's why they're still around. Go try to find a fucking Kmart. There's one, there's one in San Diego that I know of that's still open. So, this was in response to a comment that I specifically saw this morning I responded to and I was like you know why not just talk about it in a video and then everybody sees these American companies and they're like oh I'll still buy from them but they're getting their stuff made in China like no one there's not many knife makers that aren't getting things made Todd Bay Steelcraft series Will Booze Farm Forge Browse, Isham, Isham Blade Works. Um, name a company, and I guarantee they have a knife that's being made in China. But what I, what I don't understand is why certain companies are vilified for it and other companies are praised because all oh, their their knives are coming out of Taiwan and their knives are coming out of Japan they're amazing well you know that's what I don't understand is why is there a difference between being made in any other country yeah browse I am news for me he's a great guy Yeah, but Sears trying to save Kmart? That was like the blind leading the fucking stupid. You know what I mean? I mean, it was... Hey, our company's failing. Let's take on another failing company. We'll just take their assets. What the fuck? What are you thinking? I'd be like, oh, I can't afford my mortgage, so you know what I'll do? I'll sell this house for a loss and buy a more expensive place. Never mind. <laughs> you obviously don't get it. And coming, the fact that this is coming from a back ass hillbilly, that. join the military and only has a 12th grade education barely has a 12th grade education let's see that 
let's go ahead and throw that in. And browse designs. So like Vinny and I have a tendency to disagree about browse. The big problem is browse's designs don't appeal to, they appeal to a specific group. But I've never seen one, now Vinny says he has, I've never seen one that that was like crappy execution. I had to go back down there. Just, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get this chip out of the way I was doing it. I hate having to do this again. But Vinny says he's gotten a couple that were in that just weren't good knives, and I would have to say, you know, that you know that's he may have because I haven't seen all of them. But the the flip side of that too is he could be like me and be the guy that always gets the lemons. <laughs> So I really, it just, I find it irritating when I, when somebody just talks about something and it, when you say things like that, it makes you look ignorant. You know what I mean? Quality products should be treated as quality products, regardless of where they come from. Unless, you know, unless we're talking about some place that we're embargoing. Because uh, most of our embargo stuff with China and most of the Asian countries, with the exception of, like, North Korea, most of that stuff is, is done. Um, what was that? I saw something here that I... The belief that made in China equals crap. Made in Taiwan... Made in Japan, better quality. But do you guys remember? I'm older than some of you guys, I guarantee it. But there's, I guarantee there's a, few, a lot of you in here that are my age. Like, I'm in my 40s. Everything that came out of Taiwan was crap. If you went to a fucking garbage little goddamn, uh, um, like, hospital gift shop to take some, It was all made in Taiwan. It was all garbage, and it never lasted. Now, some of the best knives that Spyderco make come out of Taiwan. Japan had a connotation of being, you know, made in Japan it was garbage for a while and then they had people step in and they changed the way they did things and they took a, a process that the Americans couldn't make work because it just took too much devotion from the employees and they put it in place and it fucking worked. And that's when now made in Japan is like a mark of quality. So, oh, they were awful. But what Americans forget is we wanted the cheapest thing possible. We wanted it all to be cheap as possible. Right? As cheap as possible. And so stuff was sent off to Japan and China and Taiwan and Korea. And because we wanted the cheapest thing possible, that's what we got. But when it's the cheapest thing possible, quality's going to suffer. And that's where that, you know, we want it cheap. Okay, well, that's great. It's, it's, like, the chi it's like that pure, that, that triangle that you say, that says, you know, pick two, and it says good Chinese buffet. You can't have all three. You either get a Chinese buffet, you get a good buffet, or you get good Chinese, but you can't have all three. That therapy works. I feel a lot better. <laughs> I might actually be able to get some work done, even though I'm sick. Oh, I have to apologize, guys. Very ugly. Thank you. Um, yeah, my wife tells me how ugly I am. <laughs> Who was that? Thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne, I've seen your picture, brother. I've seen your picture. Ain't no prize pig. Well, I guess what? I disagree with you. It's my channel. I'm allowed to do that. So don't buy them for yourself then. You know, I, I don't... Not a single flaw in this knife. $240. Where's it at? Where's my re-at? 
and gorgeous. As close to perfect as I've ever gotten a knife with the exception of that sharpening notch that needed to be in it. I've watched a couple of your videos and I disagree. So that's just basically where I'm at. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying you can't have that opinion. I'm just saying that you are gonna find yourself in a situation where you can't buy anything. You're not going to be able to afford to. So, I mean, it's a mental bias that people still have that is outdated, to say the least. And now, don't be wrong. Manimal, I don't know what knives you were buying from China that you found a flaw in every one of them. If I got news for you, if you look hard enough, you'll find a flaw in every knife. It doesn't matter where the fuck it was made. If you want to find something wrong with something, you're going to. And, you know, I'm not trying to step on anybody's opinions. It's just, uh, Do what? Look through the back of the knife at the lock bar and move it around in the light and there's gaps. Do it now. Are you talking here? You're goddamn right there's gaps. There's bearings in there. They sit on all. Yeah, there's gaps in here from the back. Zero gaps anywhere else though. The only thing I'm seeing is the points of the bearings. Guess what's even worse? Guess what one has even worse light showing through there? This one, because it rides on bearings, just like that one, only these bearings aren't set as deep into the metal. Unless you want a knife of washers. Talking right there? Yeah, because there's a steel lock bar insert right there. It's a steel lock bar insert. Let me show you the only light I'm seeing. I'll turn this around. So now I argue you with me on my channel. I'll show you. Yeah. Look, man, I'm about a second from being... That's because there's a steel lock bar insert in there. That gap in there is built into the knife because that lock bar doesn't touch. The steel does. And it's a thinner piece of steel. So guess what? It's the only place there's any light showing through. That's not a manufacturing defect. Now you're just being kind of ignorant. Because now, what you're talking about is something that an inherent defect in the knife. It's the way the knife was designed. And having, spending time and hanging out with knife makers, I'll tell you right now, it was designed that way. It acts as an over travel stop and it's a steel lock bar insert. Here's one, doesn't have any light showing through. It was designed that way. It's not a flaw. Oh, here you go. Here's a $500 Farron Forge. See the lights showing through in there? That's a $500 American made knife. It's designed that way. Now, as far as, far as What was that? Now, what are we saying? I say maybe. <laughs> Who was Miller? Brian Miller? I don't believe. You know what to honestly tell you? This knife has been flipped more 
It is the only one of the knives that I own that does not have a mark on the top pen. And that steel lock bar insert is the only light that I'm seeing on this knife, except around the bearings, which actually this has less of a shine of light through the bearings. I know, and I'm not trying to set your opinions wrong. I'm just saying it was designed that way. And I have had less issues with this than I have with any of the other knives that I own. I have three Fire and Forge knives that I've had to have stop pins replaced in because they developed blade play. And that's a point of design that they have in there that allows them to readjust their knives as they, as they age. So, they have points of failure design, designed in. There's a construction accident downtown. I'm glad I don't have to go anywhere. And I'm not feeling good, so I'm in an argumentative, grumpy mood. Actually, I'm not, just not feeling good. I'm sick as fuck. Well, from Turkey. Holy crap. Hello from Turkey. The thing about the lock bar insert in that Riat is it's M390, and so stop pin. And I have an extra lock bar insert for that. So, and Croatia. Mine. So, the fact I do not have any doubt that that steel lock bar insert, even as small as it is, is gonna be just fine. There you go. Got me all wound up. Oh, this bench made. This bench made is, I've already looked at it and it's already horrific. Um, for what American companies are charging. You get something better. It's gotten to that point that I'm, I'm fed up with probably 65% of the U.S. manufacturers. probably offended half of my uh, viewer base but you know it's just it's one of those things I get to put out uh, I think you always have a place uh, scrub sub I love your I'm sharpening a ferrum forge scepter that I refinished and I'm re re resharpening it because I sharpened it and then did something to it during the refinish before I got it put back together. I dinked the blade on something. I may have hit it um, where it sits. I may have turned around and, and dinked the blade right here on um, just about midway down the blade. I think I hit it on the uh, vise when I turned. I don't remember it. That's the only place, it's the only thing in that area I could think of that would have hit it. So. Yeah, that's all I do, freehand sharpen. This is a customer's knife. Um, well, I freehand sharpen everything. I don't use a fixture system. Every once in a while, I have a guy that sent me a request. He was saying he wanted 20 degrees on each side of a, I forget what knife it was. And I haven't gotten back to him because I've been sick and just haven't been answering emails. 
the last couple of days. This really kicked off yesterday. I started feeling like shit. I gotta keep my ear open for the doorbell. I have a package coming today that requires signature. What was that? So, Dak Muskoliski, however you pronounce that, yeah, I freehand sharpen everything. or heard about the um I have that cobalt steel I have and I don't think I've ever seen one ah oh, it's the last of that that shit's nasty Theraflu does not taste good you'd think that they would come up with a better way to, to flavor that you know what I mean sweating. I'm sick and I'm sweating. And I know I should not be breaking a sweat simply from doing what I'm doing. But my daughter's back to school today. Yes, I'm using a, a whetstone, a water stone actually, not a whetstone. It's a uh, Edge Pro aluminum oxide water stone. And I figured out why these... Hey, what's up, Cody? I figured out why these appeal to me. I, I watched my grandfather, he used to have this little pocket slip stones that were like this size, but in half. He would sharp, he would take them out in the field with him and that's what we'd sharpen on. Um, and it, it kind of goes back, that's why they're so, that's why I like them so much, I think, is because they kind of are more back to the basics of where I, the way I learned to sharpen just with a different technique doing the recurves on them and, and for me to be able to tell you what angle you need to use and stuff like that. I, I've gotten to handle a few Medfords. I'm not, they're very Axe-ish. I don't take these anywhere. These stay right here. Um, anytime I've ever taken my stones to go somewhere and sharpen for somebody at on site, it, I've, it's, it never works out. Uh, they come back chipped, they come back cracked. I've had to buy new stones specifically because I went, down, went downtown one time and sharpened some knives for a guy. Here's the thing, Vinny, I, me either. And you know what? Neither is anyone else. When, Vinny was saying that he's not that into the overbuilt that overbuilt market like that yeah there's some people around that are still they're still out there that still enjoy you know those but they're dwindling because you can't use them no strop them the same you strop them the same especially if your strop material soft um it will marry up to the uh It'll marry up to the material of your strop as long as you don't push too hard. I do the the uh, DC the DC four is a that's a fucking really nice knife. It is really blue under this canopy. Everything up under here is blue, but it's not. I can't justify turning on that light and wasting any electricity to, to run that fucking shop light above. Did you guys get to see that yet? Did you guys get to see what I put up? Uh
Where are what knives? Crayon through. Here's one. So I'm looking at three different knives. Um, CDP 89 is better for strop balsa wood or leather. I just for for me as many knives as I strop. So Jerry Jerry S asks what's better for strop balsa wood or leather. Um, it depends on strop. So looking at three different knives, Cali three, CF ZDP. I, um, just because of what the steel is, uh, Mr. Beast guy. I would go with the ZDP-189, uh, the Cali-3 in ZDP-189, just because of the steel. Um, I love my Spenza. It's never going to be as good as it could be with the heat treat that they use. Even with the new heat treat that puts it up higher. Um, what knife is being sharpened? It is a um, Scepter, Fire and Forge Scepter. Belongs to a customer of mine. BC-4 is a little companion. Nice I mean, it'll work out here at night. And being able to stay out here at night is is something that had been an issue. Um, you know, being able to sharpen out here at night. Because I wanted to, and it limited the amount of work I could actually do. You know... Would I take 20 CV over ZDP-189? You know what? It'd be a close tie. I like ZDP-189 a lot. And, uh... It sharpens up really well. It gets stupid sharp. It stays well. It stays that way. Um... But to tell you that I have, would pick one over the other, really can't. Because... Um, I really can't because I don't have I, ha I don't have a knife in CDP 189 that I've carried long enough to 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 make that kind of decision. Um, use basswood for your coarse compounds and leather. Where are your specimens? Um, what's the hardest steel to sharpen for you? Um. I had some 4V that I did not too long. I did a knife in 4V. That was pretty rough. Um, ZDP-189, if you do it the way Rockstead does, I sharpen a Rockstead, and it uh, it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it was a nightmare. It came out good, though. It just... Um, ZDP-189 can be a handful. Um, S100V was pretty rough, too. No, that's another one of those steels that that Rex 121 is another one of those steels that like Elliot's steel guy was like, why would anybody make a, a knife out of that? So. Not ignoring you guys, I have. And you know what? All those steels get so much easier. Um, all those things get easier after your initial sharpening. Like, I don't have a problem resharpening any of my knives. It's when they come in and they have defects from the factory and the grind, and the grind is really coarse and, and things like that, you know? So it's just. Hard to say. What's the hardest? I remember when I thought 154 CM was starting to get challenging. That was before. That was when I first started using knives in 154 CM, and I, the stones I was using were not adequate for that. Um, you know, so it's just it kind of all. It's a matter of perspective, I guess. So. It, uh, not that I sharpen as many knives as I do. Now, somebody said something about Maximet being the best 
Uh, yeah, Vin, and Vinny's saying the same thing. Have anyone sent you Max and Matt? I heard Max and Matt's the best for... Um, S30V holds an edge, easy to sharpen, and it's really strong. It is not easy to sharpen to get it correct. It's not easy to sharpen, and uh, I don't think it holds an edge as long. I don't think it holds an edge as well as a lot of the other steels. There, Vinny and I disagree on that. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. Fucking 440C, if it's done right, is amazing. But the Maximet, you know, some people are saying it holds an edge for other, some people aren't. But edge retention is not a good i mean there's no set standard how, how do you test edge retention you know you can say that oh well this is what smoke eater 908 did this is what uh uh jake davis did and yeah it's great it's great that yeah they did some testing but for it to be a valid test it needs to be repeatable every time um you know they they have a tendency to to say oh well, i saw this guy do that well that's great did he do it exactly the same way on the next knife? Because you can't, like you would need a machine and uh, and things like that. So, you know, I like, I like the, um, I like, uh, uh, God damn, VG10 and M N690 because they might not stay as sharp as long. Uh, that's, you know, like I do, I the, the very thing that I called out about this is one of the things that I prefer about this knife versus S30, because I've my old Sebenza was an S30, S35VN. It sent. I'm not lie. It does not stay as sharp as long on my Sebenza as my old Sebenza did. But the fact that it's so easy to just touch up and resharpen and things like that. That's what this knife was designed. I was looking for in a steel when he got with Crucible and asked them. He didn't design it. Some people are like, oh, he made that steel. He didn't. He adopted it when they were coming up with something new. We're looking for. And it wasn't just him. It was some other knife makers as well. Um, but he did. He helped them come up with, you know, some ideas of what the next steel should be. But the flip side of it is, it's a little softer. Now, I will say... There's other companies that S35VN is every bit as easy to sharpen, so much better. This is ran differently. This knife does not, I use this knife a lot and it's S35VN and it stays stupid sharp way longer than my Spenza. Um, you know, that's just one of those things. Different companies run their steels a little differently and you wind up with a different result. So, that's the flip side of that. Comparing, saying that, oh, well, I don't like this. You've had one knife that was done in that steel. Then, you know, that's not a real good to, way to compare it. 20 CV. Comparing this knife in 20 CV to the knives that Elliot's going to make in the future. You can't compare those two. Completely different heat pre treat process. So, I got stones I got to pull out and wet so I can do this knife for this guy. So, you know, I mean... When I look at things, I look at the whole big, I, I, I look at a little bit more than just, oh, okay, I had this knife, it's S35VN, I don't like it. I don't like S35VN, it's horrible. Well, I do like the fact that this S35VN is easy to sharpen. I wish it stayed sharp a little bit longer, but now I have a knife that I've gotten that's an S35VN. I've sharpened a bunch of Wheeze knives in S35VN and it's a completely different animal. The way this cuts, the way it gets sharp, the sharpness you get from it is completely different. All it did, the, the heat treat process, changing that recipe and changing those temperatures a little bit are so, so much different from one to the other. Something that is completely different, the way it feels, the way it reacts to your stones, the it just, you know, and so I prefer not to limit myself. Oh, Briar scales are gorgeous. I should go back home and get some multiple rose root dug up. Who am I talking about? Go back home. I will get a hold of my brother-in-law and have him go dig some up from me. Um... 
out there on a farm. Some it's bright multiple roses type of briar. Um, it creates everywhere on the farm. Get him to dig me up some multiple rose root, bring it out here, stabilize it. Nah, that sounds like work. Take me way longer to sharpen this knife than I meant because I got on a tirade. But that that was the whole point of doing it. I didn't know how much I'm sweating like a fucking, sweating like a prostitute and confessional right now because I'm sick. And like I said, everybody's entitled to their opinion. You know, I don't take people's opinions down, except the guy that was arguing with me about making or about buying Chinese knives. And it wasn't so much that he was Chinese knives, he was specifically buying knockoffs and clones. And I, I told him, I was like, hey, uh, this isn't the right, this is not the right channel for you. I mean, you're welcome to watch and everything, but don't try and say that buying a counterfeit is a good idea. If he had just said clones, but he was saying, he's like, I buy clones and not. And I was like, well, you're talking about branded with the maker's mark. He was like, yeah, why buy, you know, this and that? And this was just a couple days ago. And I told him, I was like, look, you know, that I know knife makers, knife makers. And, and I know how much they make. And so I know that those knives that are branded with makers marks and things like that are taking not and taking money out of knife makers pockets and and i'm not talking about like the big big boys like chris reeves and all that but stealing stealing and no matter who you're stealing from it's still wrong and so i was like you know he said well these chinese companies that have one what a knockoff no i don't own any knockoffs uh i was like you know here's the thing this isn't the right form I, I refuse to allow that on my channel and then he's like oh well, you know those Chinese knife companies that you're talking about and 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 this and that that they're the same people that are they're doing that are fueling that that are making the counterfeit knives and I was like no I'm pretty sure they're not I'm pretty sure we at we Kaiser um, you know rake those guys aren't those guys are not doing what you're talking about. Those are not the companies. There's a difference. You have companies that are making legitimate knives, knife companies. And then you have, like somebody said, like the sweatshop fucking knockoff knives. Um, but I had a... Are all of what you mentioned. Okay, that I don't... Now, clones, that iffy, okay, it looks a lot like this knife, but, you know. Um, clones, clones, as long as they're not using Maker's Mark, I don't get as upset, you know, as if they're similar. Well, that happens a lot in the knife industry, but have a Hogue knife. I do not have a Hogue. But I was talking about clones and counterfeits. I've sharpened a couple of Hogues, though. They're not bad. I don't remember which ones. But, um, you know, I don't like clones, but I don't get near as wound up about clones as I do straight-up counterfeits. It's, it's a completely different animal. And, and that... You know, Spider Co. China Factory was making the real Spider Co. knives. Wait, 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 wait! What I miss here? Sale was the shop, same shop making close to the same as there. L T S. What is that? Okay, so Sean and everybody else. There are very few knife channels and things like that that I truly watch. I watch some birdshot stuff occasionally. 
I watch every once in a while. I watch a Grimsmo video. I do not watch. I didn't watch any coverage from Shot Show. I didn't watch any coverage of Blade last year. I very rarely watch other things. Um, because a lot of times, a lot of times, especially knife makers their ideas are so antiquated and things like that. I watch, if I'm gonna watch YouTube, you know what I'm watching? I'm watching fail videos and I'm watching um, Instant Karma and things like that. Or like last night, I was watching it with my kid and we were watching um, slime videos, how to make, how to make fucking slime at home and things like that. So I watch Off the Ranch, I watch Demolition Ranch and things like that. Oh, that sucks, manimal. I think it's like 86 degrees underneath this canopy right now. So, there's a lot of times you guys are asking me about knives. I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Don't. Until it shows up and I sharpen it, I'm like, oh, there it is. That's what it is. You know? But I have to get off here, guys, because I feel the urge again in my stomach so i'm gonna get off of here i apologize we'll uh, talk to you guys all later i'm out see you soon